Hi everyone, welcome to another Quiet PC video with myself, Andy Ford. Now in today's video, we'll be taking a look at our new Silent Phantom fanless PC, which as you can see, is a little unusual. As well as taking a look at the system in general, we'll also be putting it through some rigorous testing and publishing the results. There's only one place to be for a new PC. QuietPC.com the P3 open frame chassis sets a new benchmark in groundbreaking open frame chassis design. With full support for liquid cooling, the core P3 is built from the ground up to make even the most advanced PC customization and modification effortless and hassle free, making it very easy case to build into. The open frame design is what sets this case apart from the crowd and for a fanless system this is of course a huge benefit when it comes to cooling. The core P3 is designed for use in three different ways wall mount, vertical and horizontal placement. This allows for adjustment to the chassis for the best viewing presentation while ensuring outstanding cooling performance. Now let me just get one thing out of the way first before we start and that's the question almost everyone here in the office who has seen it asks, isn't it going to get dusty really quickly? Well the answer is no, not really and here's why. Most dust in a PC is actually there because it's been sucked in by the fans and even those with filters have this problem. This PC on the other hand has no fans and while it's switched on the warm air rising from the internal components will prevent dust from settling. Now Linus Tech Tips, which is another popular YouTube channel, have two videos where they have three PCs running for a year with different airflow configurations to test which gathered the most dust. Now I'll leave the links for these in the video description below and they are worth watching but they do conclude that the more airflow you have, the more dust buildup you are going to have in your system. Okay, now we've put that assumption to bed, let's take a close look at the system itself. Despite the open case, the internal design is pretty familiar with everything being where you would expect it to be. Perhaps where it differs most is with the drive bays. To keep the clean, uncluttered looks, there are three 2.5 inch drive bays sunken into the case where you would normally find drive trays. As you can see, we have one 2.5 inch SSD fitted, although we are actually running this system from an M.2 drive mounted on the motherboard. The case offers various 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch drive mounting combinations and that allows for a maximum of 5 drives in total. If we take a look around the back of the PC, we have room for two 3.5 inch drives or, with a suitable adapter, two 2.5 inch drives. There's also plenty of room behind here to add all the cables too. The front panel is equipped with the usual array of ports, so we have two USB 2s and two USB 3 ports as well as headphone and microphone sockets. So let's take a quick look at the components we are using for the Phantom PC. The motherboard we are using for this system is the ASUS Prime Z370A and that's fitted with 16GB of fast DDR4 RAM, a super fast Samsung PM961 128GB Polaris M.2 drive and the high-end Intel i7-8700K processor running at 3.7GHz, all of which is running under Windows 10 Pro. The graphics are provided by the fanless GTX 1050 Ti Carmex card and all this is powered by the NoFan P500A fanless PSU. In this section of the video I am going to put the Phantom through its paces using a number of industry standard benchmarking programs. Then I'll be comparing the results with an older system, one that's around 6 years old which is typically the age of our customers PCs when they come to us for a replacement. The reference test system is running Windows 7, has an i5-2500K processor running at 3.3GHz. It also has 16GB of DDR3 RAM and a GTX 660 graphics card. This PC uses an MSATA drive, so while it's faster than a regular hard drive, it's not as fast as an SSD or an M.2 drive. I'll also link to the test programs in the description below so you can run them on your own PC and see how your system compares to the Phantom. All the tests were carried out at 1920 by 1080 resolution. Now while I'm running the test, I'll also keep an eye on the power the system is using and after the tests are finished, I'll let you know the minimum maximum power draw for the system. Right, let's get the tests underway. Our first test is 3D Mark's Fire Strike. This is a good test for your graphics and 3D Mark have been producing industry standard benchmarks for many years. Firestrike is a DirectX 11 test for gaming PCs and is used to test high performance gaming PCs with multiple GPUs. Strictly speaking, the Phantom isn't a gaming PC and nor is it marketed as such, but it'll be interesting to know how it compares all the same. 
Now I'm using version 2.4.4264 and I'll leave the link for it in the video description below. Test number two is Cinebench R15. Cinebench is a real world test suite that evaluates your computer's performance capabilities. Cinebench is based on Maxon's award-winning animation software Cinema 4D, which is used extensively by studios and production houses worldwide for 3D content creation. This will test both the processor and the graphics performance. For this test, I'm using version R15 and I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Test number three, Crystal Dismark. With Crystal Dismark, we can easily check and analyze the performance of a hard drive or an SSD. There are plenty of extremely easy to use third party applications out there that can be used to analyze the performance of a hard drive or an SSD, but Crystal Dismark is one of the most popular ones available. For this test, I'm using version 6.0.064 bit and I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Test number four, Handbrake. Handbrake is a tool for converting video from nearly any format to a selection of modern, widely supported codecs. And this is an often used processor benchmark. The version I'm using for this test today is 1.10 and that's 64 bit. The test we'll be running today involves converting a 4K 60 frames per second movie to a standard 1080p 30 frames per second movie using the fast 1080p 30 preset. The video file I'm using for this test is a short animated movie called Big Buck Bunny and I'll leave a link to that and handbrake in the video description below. Test number 5, PC Mark 10. PC Mark 10 measures complete system performance for modern office needs using tests based on real world applications and activities, including video conferencing, web browsing, application startup, word processing, spreadsheets, photo and video editing, rendering and visualization. Now our sixth and final test, Prime95. The Prime95 test will push the processor and all the cores to its limit. And this is what we'll use to see just how hot the processor gets under full load. And again, I'll leave a link to Prime95 in the video description below. Okay, so all of the tests have been run and the results are in. So now that this is the part of the video that you've been looking forward to most. So let's take a look at the power consumption of the Phantom first. So while just sat at the Windows 10 desktop at idle, the power draw was only 26 watts. And that rose to a maximum of 139 watts during the Prime 95 CPU torture test. Moving on to the first of our actual tests, we start with Firestrike. Our older reference PC only scored 4,303. And in comparison, the Phantom PC had an overall score of 6,983, making it just over 62% faster, and that's better than 40% of all other online results submitted for the Firestrike test. Now, an important point to remember here is that Firestrike is a gaming benchmark, and we are not marketing the Phantom as a gaming system, otherwise we would have used a more powerful graphics card for this test. As you can see, to take the score to the next level, you really need a more powerful graphics card, and the next reference system shown on the scores use a GTX 970. Right onto our second test, and that's Cinebench R15. The first Cinebench test is a ray tracing render, and our reference PC only scored 465. The Phantom, on the other hand, scored 1436, which is 208% speed increase. And as you can see, it's better than all of the listed reference processors. The second Cinebench test is for the graphics, and in that test, the reference PC scored 84.85 frames per second while the Phantom scored 145.45 frames per second, making that a total increase of 71%. Our third test is Crystal Dismark, which tests the drive speeds, and as expected, there are some noticeable speed increases here, thanks to the Phantom's M.2 drive. You can clearly see the Phantom's M.2 drive offers a huge speed increase over the M SATA drive using the reference PC. The sequential read speed of 1773 megabytes a second is just over 528% faster, while the sequential write speed is just over 390% faster. The second row of figures for the 4K tests use 4 kilobyte file sizes, which are more demanding on the CPU and storage than the sequential retests. 
These show more realistic figures of how the drive will perform in general day-to-day -day use. Now our fourth test, as you may recall, involved rendering a short 4K 60 frames per second movie to a standard 1080p 30 frames per second format using the fast 1080p 30 preset. The reference system had an average encoding speed of 21.09 frames per second and took 30 minutes to encode, while the Phantom scored 53.8 frames per second, which equates to 155% speed increase and it took only 12 minutes to encode. Now onto our penultimate test, PC Mark 10, which measures complete system performance for modern office needs. The reference system had an overall score of 2,892, while the Phantom scores a much more impressive 5,739, which is just over a 98% increase. Now, the one you've all been waiting for, Prime 95. How what does the Phantom get? Does it throttle? Well, let's take a look. The minimum temperature recorded on the Phantom was 29 degrees centigrade, and that's when it was first switched on. There was a slight spike in temperature while I loaded the screen recording software, but as you can see, while I idle on the desktop, the temperature remained at around the 32 degree mark, only fluctuating by a few degrees until I started the Prime 95 torch test. Having reached the one minute mark in the test, the maximum temperature reached was 63 degrees Celsius. At the two minute mark, the temperature had increased to 70 degrees. At the 5 minute mark, the maximum temperature reached had risen to 83 degrees. After 10 minutes, the temperature had just hit 89 degrees. Half an hour in, and the temperatures are starting to peak in the late 90s, with the highest recorded temperature being 100 degrees. Here's the final reading, 1 hour in, and that's also showing a 100 degree maximum, but the current temperatures are hovering around the 90 degree mark. Also notice that the speed is stated at 4.29 GHz, meaning there is no sign of the CPU throttling due to excessive heat. So there you have it, a quick look and test of the Phantom fanless PC. Now is this the most powerful, fully fanless mainstream PC in the world? Well that's difficult to say, but it's certainly our most powerful fanless PC. Remember, the Phantom is fully configurable to your specific needs and budget, so if you do not require a system as powerful as this one, you can opt to choose for an 8th gen i5, or even an i3 CPU rather than the more expensive i7. Now I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please leave a thumbs up below. Stay tuned, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.